The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fat link together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you, that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. 
and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. seated please Advent is a truly unique time of the year a time for us as Christians of spiritual preparation it's also a time culturally like everyone else of putting up Christmas decorations and our trees our homes may be decorated with things both Christian and secular has anyone yet found a Christmas ornament of John the Baptist? Anyone? <laughs> I've been looking for years, and I still have not found one of John the Baptist. But you can learn all about John the Baptist here in church, and that's what makes our preparations unique. We hear of John today in full display, this relentless young man, described as having shaggy hair, really strange clothing, and a big booming voice. And again today, this Sunday, he crashes all of our activities here in Advent with a message that sounds to some perhaps disruptive, maybe even out of season. Just as we are busy wrapping our gifts, decorating our homes, John intrudes into our space at Christmas here like a March blizzard, delivering a message that really is anything but warm and cozy. And he exhorts us to start our spring cleaning right now. Because in a word, what this scruffy preacher wants all of us to do, literally, is to repent. And that means a thorough cleaning of the houses in which we live. And I'm not speaking of the physical houses and rooms we occupy, but rather what he intends, that place in our inner sanctum, our hearts. John the Baptist shows up again this Advent season, boldly demanding, if you will, that we start cleaning as if it were spring. The closer we look, the more we see that John is right, that our interior lives are, in fact, in need of serious attention. And so there's ample reason that John insists that we clean house that we set our sights today on repentance. I would like you to picture in your mind, if you will, your spiritual residence. This is a little over the top, but you get the idea. What a mess this place is, huh? You can see where maybe in our, our inner self, that place that no one else really ever sees, it's dominated by clutter. Can you see the corners in maybe your interior life where space is dominated by dust and debris, where there are perhaps signs of ill repair, maybe where the, the paint is peeling and could use a fresh coat, where the carpet is frayed 
The drapes are certainly faded. The windows are downright grimy and no light really gets in. It is in this space, in each of us, that John the Baptist arrives. This blunt, outspoken person that he is, and he points out the greatest deficiencies in each of our lives. Now, of course, this is the season of Advent leading up to Christmas, and a lot of people would just soon avoid any interior inspection whatsoever because it is a mess, and we don't want to deal with that right now. John may be all worked up about our spiritual homes, but why should we bother with that right now? Besides, we may like the way it looked. It may have that look and feel. It's comfortable just the way it's always been, even if it isn't perfect and tidy. So what if some of our relationships are indeed broken? So what if we regard certain persons in our lives with such anger and contempt that we are no longer willing to even acknowledge or greet them? So what if our days and our nights are so consumed with busyness and activity that we have very little time to even acknowledge God or our family members? So what if love of material stuff tends to occupy all our thoughts, our rooms, deadening our hearts, perhaps, to the urgent needs of those closest to us. So what if we view relationships as disposable and neglect of others as justified with our own success, our own lives, being the only thing that truly matters? You see, John preaches that our spiritual homes need serious cleaning. And he is willing to become an utter nuisance to us today by telling us the truth about ourselves. To interrupt all of our Advent plans, maybe even our fantasies, by uttering this single word, repent. So John insists on all of this because something is coming, he says. Someone special is on the horizon. And he calls us to repent because in Jesus, ki heaven's kingdom is coming near. And not just to some, but to all. These days of Advent can be purifying, John says, if we dare listen to him. Before we routinely engage in yet another round of holiday preparation this season. Here at church, at least, we acknowledge that it would do us all good to follow John's advice here, to bear fruit worthy of repentance. But there's that little word again, worthy. What does it mean? And where in the world do we even begin our household cleaning? What are those attitudes and agendas that so clutter our space these days and deprive us of true joy of the season? John would suggest that we have the courage today to acknowledge deeply inside of ourselves every occasion where there is pride, where there is hypocrisy, and where there is impatience. And to look even deeper and acknowledge every instance where perhaps we have exploited, ignored, and hurt people. We can repent of that, John says. We can repent of our residual anger or our constant lust for power and things. We can repent of our great dishonesty in relationships our negligence at times in prayer and worship, and perhaps most of all, our failure to live the faith by taking good and holy risks in the name of Jesus. Fill the dumpster of repentance high, John says, and let the fragrant sense of forgiveness fill the air. As you and I prepare the way of the Lord this Advent, 
Do what John says. Fling wide the door of your heart with grateful abandon and then welcome the one who comes to save you. Let us pray. Lord, you invite each of us again today to set aside all notions of our own goodness or worthiness. We all have fallen, Lord. We have fallen short of your goodness and glory. Lord, help us today to do as John says, to truly and honestly repent of all the ways we come up short before you and one another. Help us, Lord, to receive the forgiveness you alone offer us, that this season in our lives may be filled with courage, that we might live in good and holy trust of your promises. Bless us today, Lord, as we listen to John, as we repent, and as we are again granted the good news of forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Bless us this Advent season as you come to each of us in love. In your name we pray. Amen.